what I'm going to do is, before we get into the rest of the, 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 the evening, uh, random questions or things people want to know about, things people want to kind of... Okay, what if you're talking on the phone? Uh-huh. When you're talking on the phone, now what you've got to look for is you still, you're still going to focus on nonverbal communication, but now what you're going, to look, you're going to focus on is you're going to focus on rate of speech. In other words, again, this is, assumes you've created a baseline. Okay. If, are if, you watching them or are you just... This is over the phone. Over the phone. Over the phone. So you're going to have to really tune in now. Okay. So we're going to look at the speed at which they talk, the volume, the pitch, and the tone. Okay. A couple of things. When people get nervous, do they slow down or speed up? They speed up. Okay. By the way, just as an aside, any deviation from their norm is significant. Sometimes, if somebody has, has an elaborate lie that they've, they've created and they want to maintain and they've rehearsed, sometimes they won't speed up. Sometimes they'll slow down. But it'll become very polished. It'd be a lot more pristine. Okay? So it's not about the words, but the quality and the way that those words are communicated. Does that make sense? So this will be, by the way, this is the stuff you, we, those of us who are natural bullshit detectors, these are the things that tip us off something's not right. Just a change in the speed, change in the tone, change in the pitch. Okay? So if like you don't have the baseline yet, like say if you're a manager and you're hiring, mm -hmm. and you know you got maybe 30 inter minutes with that candidate, mm -hmm. but you don't have the baseline yet, so then ask them about something mundane, something that has no emotional relevance whatsoever, something you know like that you know, gets you a baseline. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite? You know, what kind of car you drive? How long you had it? Right. Do you live in Do you live in Carmel Valley? Do you live, you know, in Pel and calibrate. It's like a lie detector is set at the beginning. Yeah, the best lie detector on the planet is the one sitting in your head. Yeah. I notice people like to do small talk before business. Mm -hmm. People are subconsciously doing that, or many times. Doing what that? What What we are inherently trying to do as social creatures is we are unconsciously always seeking community. We're always seeking connection and cooperation. I wish we had more time because I have some drills that would just, by the way, it's not psychological, it's physics. Everything human beings do is an application of the, the physics principle of entrainment. Okay, there's a, there's a video floating around YouTube that demonstrates this dramatically better than anything I could tell you. But they took 40 separate metronomes, set them all moving at different speeds. Within four and a half minutes, every single one of them synchronized. Well, but it was in a rocking table. Was in a, I don't, I didn't see any table rocking. The table, the table had, was on, on wheels. Okay. I didn't, so, I, so I, the wheels yeah. helped help do that, so. Not the one I saw. Not the one I saw either. Yeah. There's probably a bunch of them doing the same thing. But you can, you can actually do this. In fact, in my influence courses, we actually do that. We actually entrain people's nervous systems and cause them to do weird stuff. Okay. Uh, for those of you who want to you know, research the neurophysics behind this, there's a company out there called HeartMath. Yeah. They do a lot of great work with uh, monitoring and measuring the heart for medical science and medical issues and things like that. Um, they've discovered the principle of entrainment even happens between a dog and his boy. You know, they take uh, a dog and his boy, they take him out into to, out to play, they have them hooked up to these machines, and within 15 minutes, their heartbeats synchronize. Oh, wow. Okay. Entrainment. Sorry. Who said that? Yeah, it's 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 the way our universe works. Okay, and here's the, you know, getting a little bit metaphysical, but not too much that it you know, kind of invalidates what we're saying. The old mystery schools used to tell us, as above, so below. They called it the law of analogy. Basically what they said was that the universe follows patterns. It follows cycles and that at different levels of reality, the same patterns repeat. 
if the reptile brain runs your body, and your body physically entrains, then your reptile brain starts to entrain, then your emotional brain starts to entrain, then your rational lying brain starts. That's why you finish each other's sentences, by the way. Because your thought patterns tend to synchronize. It's also one of the biggest influencers of your perception. Okay? It's a universal principle. Now, we can take it into all different directions in fairly provable ways, but again, that's a different class. Yes? E-N-T, is it E-N-T? Entrainment. E-N-T-R-A-I-N-M-E-N-T. E-N-T-R-A-I-N-M-E-N-T. Had to look up and see it for a minute. By the way, that's one of the ways that you can tell if people are either remembering something or making it up. When they look up into their right, they're generally making something up. That doesn't mean they're lying. It just means they're creating a picture in their head. If they look like to the left, it's memory. Yes, sir. So when you have somebody in a hypnotic induction, uh -huh. let's say you're dealing with the more primal side of things, right? Mm -hmm. So, but listed underneath that reptilian, you know, kind of consciousness, you're dealing with more of like social behaviors. So is there a possibility that somebody under hypnotic induction due to their social behavior with the hypnotist, is lying. Yes, lying, uh, hypnosis and lying have nothing to do with each other. If you, um, there's a myth uh, when it comes to hypnosis that uh, somebody in hypnosis can't tell the lie. That's lie. <laughs> okay? If somebody's a great liar when they're not hypnotized, they'll be a better liar when they are. <laughs> because, because the part of them that doesn't make the distinction between what's true and not true isn't there anymore. No. <laughs> and you'll never see this on a transcript. <laughs> I, I get really interesting cases in my clinic. I really do. I mean, the average hypnotist gets weight loss, smoke station. I, by the way, I have about 100% success rate with weight loss. I just don't get that many. I get like three a year. Right? I, get, I get people whose transplanted organs start talking to them, <laughs> start forcing memories, you know, like this person's a total health nut and they get this, tran this, this transplanted pancreas or spleen and they start craving pizza and beer. You know? I get hysterical paralysis where, where uh, you know, because of a, a young girl's social upbringing, she got betrayed by some of her friends, but her upbringing said she wasn't allowed to express it, that she was a bad person for having all these evil, hate hateful, hurtful thoughts. And she wouldn't let herself express it, so her hand just stopped working one day. And she went to the doctor, she went to the, neuro, the neurosurgeon, she went to the psychiatrist, the faith healer. Sweet girl, very sweet girl. And you know, all the while she was doing this over the months, going to all these different specialists, you know, she still had to go to school, she still had to function, so she trained herself to write with the other hand. Then one day it stopped. And nobody could figure out what the heck was going on. So they sent her to me, because they couldn't find which doctor in the dictionary. <laughs> One session, both hands were working. She's been fine ever since. Why? Because we have things in our life that we inherently resist, and things in our life that we don't accept at some level. And it's that fight between those two parts that causes most of our problems. It's very similar to when we try to fight between what we know to be true and what we're trying to convince the rest of the world is the truth. Most of what I do clinically is getting those parts talking, communicating, expressing the things that have been held back, expressing the things that you don't realize are driving your behavior. Ladies and gentlemen, I know every one of you in here is extremely intelligent, very honest upstanding fine people. Okay, I know that because you have great taste in coming out tonight. <laughs> How could that not be? But I also know that each and every one of you have things in your life that you're still denying, the things that piss you off to this day that happened when you were five years old. When you think about it, you get friggin' enraged or upset or scared. 
Those are the things that are driving your behaviors. They're the ones driving the bus. As much as we would... Anybody here know who Emu Phillips is, by the way? He was a famous, relatively famous comedian, kind of came and went. Kind of like that odor in the enclosed space. But, but he used to have this really cool bit he used to do. He used to say, you know, I used to think that the brain was the most amazing organism on, in the human body. And then I thought, who's telling me that? <laughs> right? That's literally our lives, guys. We're monkeys who learn to think. Your, your, your neocortex, that, that superficial level of your brain, is the least informed and the last to know. Okay? It, it just is. Accept it, because when, until you accept it, you can't transcend it. You can't. You can rationalize all you want. At the end of the day, you'll still be 50 pounds heavier and not know why. Okay? You can lie. By the way, that's really what it comes down to. We lie to ourselves all the time. Is the, is the word denial? Living in denial? Yeah, we deny. We refuse to accept. Okay? Why? Because somebody in power somewhere told us what we were thinking and feeling at some level, in some context, was inappropriate. And we believed them. Whether they were right or wrong, I have lifelong anger issues, guys. I'll be honest with you at that. Don't piss me off. No. <laughs> but the truth of the matter is, is a lot of the things I'm, I think I'm angry about when I do my self-work, they're never the thing that's triggering the anger. It's always something much earlier, something much more primal. There's that word, primal. Okay? I'm going to get back into the lie detection, but to finish uh, doing this over the phone, you must, again, don't get sucked into the story. If you start paying attention to all the things in the story that are true, let me tell you something, that's the fastest way I can put the whammy on you. Okay, I teach conversational hypnosis. I teach conversational persuasion and influence. And all I have to do is tell you things that you can't deny and you will believe whatever I tell you when I put things in that aren't true. Because it's how you're hardwired. It's called stacking realities. What you want to do when you're looking for liars is you want to do the inverse. You want to focus on everything that doesn't add up and only on that. And you've got to be like a pit bull. Okay? You've got to stick with the data regardless of your feelings about it. You don't judge it. In other words, you don't say, this guy's a lying motherfucker. <laughs> and I'm going to prove he's a lying motherfucker. This is what doesn't fit. When enough cues build up, now you have a pretty good idea of whether somebody's being deceptive or they're just stressed out. Okay? So, does the rate of speech speed up or slow down? Does the volume speed uh, increase or decrease? Pitch. Do they, get, do they start to talk like this? They sound like chipmunks, right? <laughs> I didn't do it, right? Did they go, I did not have sex with that woman? <laughs> or do they go, I did not have sex with that woman? Especially not that one, but anyway. <laughs> tone. Do they get aggressive? You know, do they, is there a change in their tonality? You know, do they get angry? Do they get afraid? Is there a fearful tone? These are the things that are going to tell you what's really going on. And like I said before, they're the things that you will unconsciously pay attention to first. They're the things that will set up, especially for the ladies. Ladies are, are natural bullshit detectors. Okay? And it's not because they're smart or they'd like to think so. No. It's because of their socialization. They actually use more of their brain than us guys do. We're very direct thinkers most of the time. But because of their socialization, yes, ma'am? We are taught that men think entirely differently than us. And we're taught to second guess every intuition that we have because, oh, they're completely different. And just as they say, they do that. They're different than you and me. You know, they are just trying to understand their limitations. <laughs> and again, we see a person's values interrupting on the group. But you're actually right. We do think differently, but not the way you think. Uh. I'll, give you a little, okay, I'll give you guys a little bit of a sidebar. You guys are really putting in some great stuff here. 
in, in the hypnosis courses, the conversational persuasion and influence classes that I teach, I teach this concept or this, this series of, or body of techniques called language patterns. Language patterns are unique structures that come out in the way we speak that are direct mirrors of our thought processes. One of the most fundamental language patterns that we have is called cause and effect. Cause and effect is literally the language of belief. Okay? Using cause and effect, I can take any two unrelated items, give them a causal relationship, and then using uh, another pattern called complex equivalence, I can make it mean anything I want it to. <clears throat> and your brain will do somersaults trying to make it work, regardless of how ridiculous mm -hmm. the, the, the examples are. Give an example. Okay, you asked for it. Many times when I talk to people, I, I let them know the, a very cool physics principle, that just the color of the walls of this room can actually cause your weight to go up and down. And most people don't realize it, but you know, light waves are in motion, and we all know that things that are in motion tend to create more mass as they move. True or not true? Sure. Okay? And the faster things go, the harder they impact our body, and it causes us to begin to move at different rates. And as we begin to move at those different rates, we start to weigh differently depending on how much photons are impacting us at any given moment. <laughs> what the fuck did he just say? <laughs> right? And I'm using, here's the thing, I'm using ridiculous examples. True or not true? But there are enough truisms in there we all know that lights, that photons move. They impact us, that things that move tend to take on more mass. Because I used the cause and effect language pattern, your brain did somersaults trying to come up with a rationale for why it's plausible, why it could be true. Where is he coming from? What does he mean? What is... True, not true. No, I'm smarter than that. No, you're not. Okay. I knew you would say that shit. <laughs> Well, I, mean, for I know he does. I know. I know. That's okay. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to say that it's true, like, you know, you're going to start weighing 10 pounds more. But we have no way of detecting whether you don't weigh just a little bit more. So, 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 thank you so much for coming today. No, but you're right. He's absolutely, because he know because here's the point. He has a very academic, he's very, very grounded in the sciences, I would imagine. True or no, not true? No. No. What, do you, what do you do? Uh, I'm an artist. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. He's a smart guy. I like him. <laughs> yeah, that was my second guess. But, but my point is, my point is, is that, is it plausible? And that's what he's going to. It doesn't have to be capital L logical. It just has to be plausible. Yeah, just enough to confuse them. To well, again, them here's, wrong. here's yeah. my point. Here's my point. I was deliberately, first of all, I stood up in front of a room full of people, challenged them, and then used deliberate, you know, ridiculous sayings and metaphors and examples. But I just linked them using one hypnotic language pattern. And look what the effect was. What happens when I start using things that are in fact true, that you can verify, that aren't so diametrically opposed outside of the field of possibility, and I link them to things you already know are true. Yes. You also started talking a lot quicker. Yes, I did. More animated. Yes, I did. Because it's hard to not riff at this stuff. It's just too much fun. But the point is, is that when I start utilizing hypnotic language, okay, which only honest people should know, but it don't. Your ability to analyze, parse, and dissect information drops. You lose the capacity. A, first of all, you can't keep up with the rate and speed at which I'm hitting you with hypnotic language to, to find bits and pieces of data without all the other things you're not focusing on going in the back door. Okay? Your conscious mind gets overwhelmed. How many of you noticed that even though I talked really fast, it was still kind of fun to listen to? I mumbled too much, yeah. <laughs> but it was like, wasn't there kind of a, and, I, and again, I, I laid it on heavy because I wanted you to physically feel the difference. How many noticed a little bit of a pressure behind their forehead? That's tension building up as you struggle to process the language I'm using. In, in real applications, I wouldn't do it nearly that heavy. Okay? But I'm doing it to prove a point. Yes? Oh, another Another way of thinking about it, 
maybe could be you were doing some form of distraction at the same time amidst your, I call it patter, you were injecting what you want to inject into the subconscious while you were distracting this conscious one. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> By the way, how, here's another thing. Here's, here's the other thing, okay? Aside from the speed with which I said things, how much of what I actually said can you remember? Can you? I, I challenge anybody re to remember more than a few sentences, if that. One of the side effects of using these kinds of language patterns artfully is spontaneous amnesia. You get the message, but you forget, you lose the verbiage. Yes? I was going to say that in your story, you used a lot of um, physical imagery, like colors, like oh, warm colors or cool colors. And we're busy thinking about visualizing like the creativeness mm -hmm. of it, the big picture, rather than making the connections of what you said. Mm -hmm. You get lost in the story. Yeah. Oh, there's that thing again, getting lost in the story, right? Mm -hmm. Now, again, we kind of took a diverge off into left field, right? But the point is, is that when we, when we start to parse this language, by the way, how many people ever read a romance novel? Okay. Roman, how many people here love mysteries? Anybody love mysteries? Do you know the most hypnotic writer on the planet is Agatha Christie? There are whole societies devoted to studying what she's written to figure out how the hell she created prose so powerful. Okay? It's language patterns like this. They're laced. All good writing. All music. Okay? All theater. All good theater. All form of pleasurable, rewarding, absorption, creating human interaction is laced with these kinds of patterns. In order for you to find the lie, you gotta turn that part off. You gotta look for the things that don't fit because you're predisposed neurologically to try and make things fit. That make sense? Okay, okay, so go back, going back to the 15, I'm gonna have to move really fast here. Um, well, again, some of these we've already covered by, in a rather more circuitous route. Um, extreme overreaction. If they just get in your face, get indignant, they're lying. More often than not. Or they'll do something like, I can't believe you even asked me that. <laughs> oh, nobody's ever said that to you? Right? Or I've worked here 20 years. I, no one would, I would never do something like that and jeopardize my pension. That's called a lie of influence, by the way. They didn't just say, no, I didn't do it. They said, I've worked here for 20 years. My reputation is impeccable. Of course I didn't do it. I mean, of course I didn't do it was <laughs> optional. But this is, again, this is where we'll start getting into deflection. This is where people will start to deviate from the actual question that you ask them and start to attack or answer something else. Uh, I have some examples, but I want to get through these real quick. Um, okay, I covered the men cheating example, so that's another one. Uh, okay. Behavioral pause or delay, once again, if, they're le if the rate and speed at which they respond changes abruptly, the pauses get longer or shorter, Pay note, that's a little, little flag in your box, okay? Um, head nod versus words, we've covered that. Hey, I'm doing pretty good. Yeah. Uh, hiding their mouth or eyes. This time, every now and then, if they're eating, it's probably different. Right? Every now and then you see something, a lot of people are taught that when they're going to pick their teeth, they cover their mouth and, and do this. But if, if you're talking to somebody and as you're, they're approaching a question that's emotionally volatile, and all of a sudden they cover their mouth or they cover their eyes, like, let me think about that. What are they doing? They're blocking, right? They're, they're, they're hiding something. Un they're, they're, unconsciously they're trying to hide, so they're hiding it behind a gesture. Now remember, each of these by themselves does not mean they're lying. But you start getting them in twos and threes. Now we want to start to get a little bit more investigative. Right? I could call these just your passive 
you know, looking both ways before crossing the street kind of things. You just do it, and then when they, all of a sudden something doesn't quite match, now we know to go a little bit deeper. Um, look for body tilt or body orientation. This isn't actually on their, um, this actually isn't on, on the Hansen 15, but this is something that's kind of interesting. One of the things we talked about earlier is that when people are, are lying or are about to lie, they're going to find a way to distance themselves. So a lot of times their torso orientation will change. Um, there's this thing called anchor point rotation, uh, which basically means when you're, when you're sitting, what, what's, you know, what's supporting you is your, your hips, your shoulders, your arms. If all of a sudden you ask them a question and there's a very large body shift of the anchor points, that's something to pay attention to. I don't have a chair. Can I, can I, and can I have that chair? I'll use this one. When you're, can you all see? I'll stand in the middle. One of the things is so, a lot of times, the, one of the, the big ones is called the triple cross. So somebody you know, asks me a question and I feel defensive and, and I, maybe I'm in a very open, very okay posture and then all of a sudden you see this, right? And it looks like I'm in deep thought, right? No, I just guarded my groin, my chest, my face, okay? I might, you might as well hold up a sign and say, this man is lying to you, right? If you see them move from this position and shift away, they're creating distance. Sometimes it'll be even less obvious. The feet. A lot of times, pay attention to when you're, when you're looking at anchor points, from the waist down in a seated position sometimes, um, it'll be the hips, the knees, and, what, and even the, the, the limb that isn't rooted. It's the part that isn't rooted that will start to give away the most, the most indicators of, remember, these are all stress indicators. So if you see that I'm kind of sitting here, holding, hanging out, being my own guy, you, you ask me a question about you know, the blonde I was playing with the other day, and I go, what are you talking about? <laughs> right? Or maybe I'm doing this, and then all of a sudden I just, what do you mean? <laughs> see how subtle? So we've got to, we've really, can you guys see what I just did? No. No. All right, I'll just, I'll just do yoga for everybody. So I'm up here, right? Hopefully, if you hear a tearing sound, you know what just happened. So I'm here, right? And she asked me what I was doing with that blonde, and my foot's kind of going like this, and I go, well, what do you mean? And I just hold my foot still. Or, what's that? Or maybe what, I don't, again, I can't really do it, but they actually hold their foot still with their other foot. So maybe in a profile, you'll see this. So maybe they're like this, and then all of a sudden, they just, that foot's kind of bouncing, and they just kind of lock it down. Okay? These are the things that, that are the most likely ones you'll catch if you're in a place or in a position where you can look at them. Because they're the things we consciously... When, when, she, when I'm talking with this young lady, she's looking at my eyes, she's listening to my voice, she's watching my facial cues. Okay? She's not paying attention to where my feet are pointing, where my shoulders are pointing, consciously. Does that make sense? Yes? version of what I heard is that, so correct me. Number one was basically if they freeze, that's bad. And I know this is really simplifying it, but then the last one was if they move, that's bad. So what is the okay thing for them to do then? If they keep doing what they... <laughs> and I don't mean like... No, no, no. Just like Were you here when we talked about baseline? Mm -hmm. Okay. Remember, we have to know what is their baseline behavior. What do they normally naturally do? Without that information, we can't calibrate. All we can calibrate is that there's been some change somewhere, but we don't know what it means. So we have to know. If I'm talking, and, I, and the first thing I do when I'm going to talk is I, I kind of hang out, right? right? So by the way, this is actually an alpha male pos position. Yeah. Okay, if you want to feel more alpha, sit this way, even if you're female. <laughs> however, <laughs> however, so in it, yeah, I'm taking up space. I'm expanding laterally, as well as more or less. Yeah, <laughs> right. You know, um, you'll see people who are, are very shy or who are, are basically betas. They'll take up as little room as possible. They won't. They won't move beyond their borders or their boundaries. Now, contextually, if you're in a situation where you have to dress somebody down and they hate you or they have no respect for you, you'll see them do this. 
It's an inappropriate dominant signal. It's the fuck you signal. It's a show of disrespect. It's a show of rebellion. If contextually it's inappropriate, you see the guys who are too cool for school doing this all the time, right? The al- the, you know, the, the jocks, the alphas are, you know, they're, they're kind of you know, right here. Yeah. And then Fonzie comes in, you know, the rebel without a clue. And he goes, hey, hey, Prince, how you doing? And he's basically saying, fuck you with his body language. Okay, why? He's assuming an alpha male position in a situation where he's not the alpha. Okay, and that's usually when the principal lowers the boom. Right? So these are things, again, people reading 101. A lot of times there'll be things like, there's a story that uh, Paul Ekman tells. There's this thing we, in body language we call emblems. Emblems are body language symbols that are culturally specific, but they can take the place of words. So in this culture, if I wave my driving finger at you, you know what that means, right? Two words come to mind, right? It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a gesture that has a specific wording attached to it that we culturally know what that means. Now, you go to a different country like Germany, or I think, is this, is this I know in England it's probably the same. But in certain countries, this does not mean what it means here. In Germany, it means the same. In Germany, it means the same? Yeah, I think we covered that before. Right? Right. But when, uh, yeah, you guys saw, saw that movie, uh, Inglorious Bastards, right? Oh, go read it, because it, go see it. There's a great, there's a great scene where uh, the bastards are trying to fool one of these uh, German Gestapo guys into thinking that one of the guys in the group is a fellow German. And so they start talking about numbers. And the first, and I, you can tell me if this is true or not true, but it's just a great example, is the guy asks him how many times somebody did something, the number was three. Right? And the guy who's pretending to be German goes three. And they don't do it that way in Germany. Serving drinks. Serving drinks, right? Okay. And, and in Germany, what do they do? How do they signal three? Busted. That's an emblem. It's a culturally specific uh, gesture in place of a word. Now, sometimes they slip out unconsciously. One of the, ones that, the stories that Paul Ekman tells is when he was uh, vetting some people for uh, a, an experiment, he had a young lady, I'll, I'll, I'll just do this here, he had a young lady sitting in the chair and he was videotaping all these things, but in this particular event, case, he had to be very aggressive, he had to be very hostile and dress down, dress down the lady. And so all the while she's politely answering the questions, mm-hmm. and all the while he's, she's answering his questions, her hand is assuming a really interesting position, mm-hmm. kind of like mine is. <laughs> Can you see? I'm, I'm trying to... <laughs> it's, here, I'll turn it up for you. <laughs> okay, these things can sometimes sneak out unconsciously. We call that leakage, yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Remember, remember the, the most unnatural thing that humans do in, in the world according to David is withhold or, or um, refuse to express emotion. That's a very unnatural thing for us to do because emotions are stress. And we're designed to process stress, not hold on to it. And the, yes? So if you're a liar. <laughs> yes, if I was a liar. And you want to lie to your girlfriend or whatever. Uh-huh. <laughs> Seems to me the most important thing is to not give them a baseline, right? Yep. So the, the way to do it is like in game theory is that every so often you throw in a curve. Here's an artist there. who studies game theory. Right? Yeah. I mean, like, so like they don't know what the baseline is because like once in a while he crosses his leg and sometimes yeah. he talks like a high yeah. pitch. That's how you strip a lie detector. You guys know that, right? Yeah. Well, again, by the way, most people suck at catching lies. I mean, even the trained professionals suck at catching lies. Very rarely does anybody get above a 29% in terms of their veracity for lying. Okay? But these are things that we can begin to pay attention to. There's a whole lot of power and influence to be had in the world by understanding our nonverbal reality, the way we process things. Okay? Um, I have some things. How many, how many people got some good stuff tonight? Raise your hands. Okay, cool. How many people would like to learn more? All right. Um, it is past the witching hour. Some of you have to go home or turn into pumpkins. So we've got a couple of things coming up. By the way, we're going to make this video available. 
uh, for a limited time on my blog at uh, nlppower.com. We'll also put it on uh, my covert hypnosis blog so you guys can watch it, tune in and watch it again. Um, we've got a couple of things coming up that uh, are really kind of fun. How close to 15 did we get? Um, actually, we got most of it. Actually, I think we got more than 15. You got 10? Yeah. I got to give you more? Oh, shit. I covered a lot more than 15 because I, I, I condensed a lot of them. But the anchor point movement is, I'm looking for big stuff. Yeah. We want to see big things first because if you can't spot the big ones, you aren't going to find the little ones. So look for body orientations. Look for large global changes. Look for when they block you. Look for when their tone speeds up, their volume raises. How about sweating? Sweating, can, sweating is a sign of stress, not necessarily deception. Right? A nervous laugh. Right. Nervous laugh, yes, very much so. Oh, also non-words. When you hear them stutter, uh, when you hear them start to go, uh, er, uh, uh, and there's an increase in how they normally do that, indication that uh, they could be lying. Yes? No, no, no. <laughs> to mess up a lie detector, you, 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 you distort their baseline. Okay. You distort their baseline. One of, the thing, one of the most common ones is actually to put a tack in your shoe. Mm -hmm. And every, every question they ask you, you just jack your, your, your heel. I'm not saying you can do it with hypnosis, too. <laughs> uh, some other things. If they start bringing God into it, call your lawyer. No, it's really, I swear by Allah, I swear on a stack of Bibles, they start bringing God into it. My kinesic interview, an interrogation teacher, first thing out of his mouth, the minute they bring God into it, they're probably lying to you. I swear on my family, not quite so much, but yeah, pretty much in the same category. Because what they're, it's called dressing the lie. They're starting, they're trying to, to give you the, the, affirm, the perception that they're as unimpeachable as the Almighty. That because they believe, how could you possibly question, right? Hitler did the same thing. There was a, uh, back when I was studying this stuff, he, he had a saying, he had a slogan that he taught the population. And I don't think he came up with it, but he had some pretty, pretty smart people wielding public opinion. He used to say, to serve Hitler is to serve Germany. To serve Germany is to serve God. Makes sense to me, right? Right? When you go to a, a, a religious ceremony, especially like Orthodox Catholic, which I'm recovering from, <laughs> you walk into the cathedral, right? And you're walking, I'll do this. So we're walking down the pews, right? And there's pews on either side, and there's this big stained glass something that represents the Almighty who in relation is really friggin' big, and the arbiter of whether we go into heaven or not, right? So we're walking, and there's this altar right between me and God. And who stands behind the altar? The priest. What's the subliminal message? How do you get to God? Right? It's all going on right in front of you exactly all the time. why politicians stand in front of the flag. Welcome to the matrix. <laughs> <laughs> it's really what we call it. Yes? Any comments on a uh, more uh, current personality uh, whose name is Chris Christie? Chris who? Chris Christie, Governor Chris Christie. You know, I haven't, I haven't followed it, but if I go and look at the videos, I could pretty much tell you some nasty shit. Look. There's a lot of people who are, that get paid a lot of money to deceive you. There's a, people who get paid a lot of money to influence you without you even realizing it. And if all you do, yeah, if all you do, not even advertising, but it's in advertising. If all you do is go through the world and focus on the words you hear, 99% of what's driving your behaviors is outside of your control. But... Once you become progressively more aware, now you gain control and a tool that you can use to get everything you want in life. It starts with learning how to tell people are bullshit and you're not. It's a good skill to have. Yeah. The two techniques you've been describing when you tell apply when people believe their own lies wholeheartedly. Either because they've told them for so long or because they've 
Yeah. Again, the longer they've had to prepare the lie and practice the lie, the harder it is to detect. But they won't give you signals, will they, if they themselves... Not as much. Food. Not as much. In order for them to, to, for their story to start to fall apart, you have to go back and re-inject stress into the system. Remember, the more stress you inject into the system, the less control you have over your, your body. It's just that simple. If you, yes? Then why would you want to be nice and stop questioning? Because sometimes you're wrong. Because sometimes you misread the signals. Sometimes, even though this person is lying to you, they control something in your life that you, that you need them for. Calling your boss a dirty liar, probably not a smart career move, <laughs> right? You have to use wisdom with some of this. If there's, if, if there's somebody in your life that you feel is doing you wrong and you know you're better off without them and you're okay walking away from that relationship or decisively changing the dynamics of that relationship, go for it. I'm not saying don't, I'm saying think about what you do. Because remember, people will always forget what you said but they will never forget how you made them feel. Okay? Yes? Um, how do you, some of these things, you know, you said they could be like a person's nervous and all these other things. Um, so how do you end up telling, once you recognize these, how do you know if maybe they're just nervous, if they're just having some other emotional issue, or if it's actually... Does it change when you ask about something that's not threatening? If they're nervous in general, their behavior shouldn't change all that much. So like, like the, the, the example I gave when you, the person's coming for a job interview and they're nervous, rather than asking them questions about the job that they're trying to get, that they're hoping for your approval, that they, the, the, the ramifications of not getting it are stressing them out, ask them about something that's not threatening and see what happens. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a time, for example, when I had a job and uh, the person that I worked for asked me if I like signed in five minutes later or something or earlier. Mm -hmm. And I did it, but I was so mad that I was even accused of this because it turned out to be like a dollar's difference or something. Mm -hmm. I was so offended by this. But so many things that I demonstrated, you just described as, you know, typical of liars. Mm -hmm. And now I'm thinking, oh my gosh, this is like years ago, but I'm thinking, oh my gosh, they just probably totally thought I was lying because I did, I really, I was so offended. Mm -hmm. That's what got my response. Mm -hmm. I was offended that somebody even, mm -hmm. yeah, so I really did overreact all this stuff. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't that I was lying in that case. You were here when I talked about Othello's flaw? Mm -hmm. You just saw it, right? She got upset, she got offended. She gave all the cues that would trigger somebody who's got a guilty conscience trying to cover it up. Was she lying? No. Be careful who you accuse, right? Now, I'm, this was a job that you had, right? So they knew something about your behavior? Yeah, and I, uh, yeah I was always known for being you know, pretty honest. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, okay. But I was just mad, and so I was just going late to work instead of showing up on time to go Again, but what did we see? We saw a, a strong emotional response that's out of the ordinary, right? Doesn't always mean they're lying. That's why you gotta be careful. Yes, Ken. Oh, yeah. We, we gotta hand out some, pa we have some papers to hand out. Ladies, can you start handing them out? What we've got going on, I'll, I'll answer questions afterwards, okay? So um, April 22nd through the 26th, this is probably not for most people here. But for those of you who really want to jump down this persuasion and influence rabbit hole, learn the secrets of nonverbal communication, how to weave those language patterns like I was showing you, how to connect with people and create instant chemistry and connection in any situation or circumstance. We have what I call my, my CPI, Conversational Hypnosis Masterclass. It's a four day training, five day training, I'm sorry. Five day training, April 26th, or 22nd through the 26th. It's gonna be here. And from 9 a.m. to about 6 p.m., I will drill you on a complete system of persuasion and influence, which includes body language, rapport skills, hypnotic language patterns that turn everything you say into a practically irresistible, compelling hypnotic induction. It just makes you very, very fascinating. Okay? How to tap into people's emotions in a way that they want to do what you want them to do, ethically and honestly. That's everything. We're the good Jedi, by the way. Okay? There's people out there using this to hack the system. Um, normally to walk into that is 1997, okay? If anybody wants to jump on that, uh, I'm, gonna give, I'm giving a $500 fast action discount. 
You can get the whole five day training with the certification for $14.97. Now, not everybody wants to get certified in uh, conversation hypnosis. I had this epiphany not too long ago that not everybody who comes to my meetup actually wants to be a hypnotist. <laughs> What's up with that? And I realize that they fall into one of several categories. There are people who want to be able to do this with or for other people. There are people who want to do things for themselves, who want to be self-sufficient, who want to learn the techniques, take them home, chew on them, and, and kind of do it their own way. And then there's people who want shit done for them. Right? They don't want they don't want to lose weight on their own. They want somebody to help them lose weight. They don't want to, you know, take, do months and months of trial and error how to, how to attract people and be honest and, and do things. They want somebody to walk them through it and help them kind of install it, right? So what we've got is what I call the on-ramp. Um, on, on March 29th and 30th, I'm doing a very special two-day intensive. This is for people who liked what you got here tonight, who want to go even deeper and not just go into how to read people, but how to use it to influence people. This is all about nonverbal influence and basically speed reading anybody you meet in any situation or circumstance. It's called people reading for fun and profit. Okay? And I will teach you things about information that people are giving you constantly that they will literally and figuratively tell you every single thing you need to know to influence them to do what you want them to do or at least know what to do and predict what they're going to do. Okay? I don't have one of those cool papers, so thank you. So normally um, for that, people reading. By the way, we're also going to cover handwriting analysis. Uh, we're going to cover what, what NLP likes to call metaprograms. Uh, these are filters that people have in place that automatically tell you how they sort reality so that when you present information to them, you present it in the way that they naturally are predisposed to like it. It's pretty cool. Um, also very good for smoothing out relationships, by the way. Um, and you can read everything that's on here. It's, it's pretty, we're gonna talk about body language, how to influence people, how to no longer feel powerless, how to use your own body language to change your emotional state into anything you want at the drop of a hat. You ever walk into a situation and you just feel completely overwhelmed? What if you could just shift one or two things and in two minutes be somebody else? We'll show you how to do it. Scientifically, they've proven that if you do what I'm gonna teach you in this training, you can amplify how much testosterone you produce by as much as 25% in two minutes. Okay, that's a good thing. Especially in this day and age, okay? Um, for that training, March 27th, 29th and 30th, it's regularly 497. For those of you who want to jump into that today, I've only got like 20 seats, I think, for that. I'm going to let you all in today for 197. Two full days, one-on-one -on -one with me, and I'm going to walk you through secrets about body language, interpretation, and how to use it. That'll make you like James Bond or Janet Bond or, or whatever. Is that every day? Uh, nine to it's nine to six, yes. Okay. And again, this is again, this is a very practical application specific class. I'm not gonna I don't waste my time on low percentage techniques. I'm only gonna teach you stuff that I've used, proven, has scientific backing behind it, as well as real world applications. For those, so I highly recommend as many people jump into that as you, you can. Um, let me bring up two of my, my very, very wonderful helpers today. And uh, I'll, 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 put the, I'll put the URL for you. I'll also send it out through the meetup boards with the URL. You can go right to it. Okay? Uh, let me have Dawn and, and Candy come on up here for a second. Give these two a big round of applause. They're my support today. They're the ones that, that have been, been signaling, signaling me fervently since 9 o'clock to say. Right? And of course, I like to talk, so here I am. This is my lovely wife, Dawn. And the reason, and the reason that, that she is my wife is because she is, in fact, a better hypnotist than I am. <laughs> okay. Dawn is going to be helping you. Anybody who wants to get in on the People Reading for Fun and Profit course, she's going to be handling that. Just fill it out. Uh, see Dawn. She'll take your papers. Don't leave them laying around. Okay. I'll be hanging out to answer any questions you have. But for those of you who just have some stuff, you, you don't want to be in a group or whatever, we have a very special gift for everybody here tonight. Everybody here 
is entitled to come and spend one half hour with me at my clinic. I'll do a personal consultation with you. We'll discuss the areas of your life you want to work on and what the best route is for you to get what you want and why you came here. If you want to go into more lie detection stuff, fine. You want to learn if you've got aches, pain, stresses uh, that you want to get rid of, I'll show you how to get rid of you know, I don't promise to fix your problem, but I'll show you how to get there, you know, where to go and what to do. Also, if you have relationship stuff you want to work on, you have health problems. Um, we have a, an unprecedented recovery rate with things like acute and chronic pain, physical or emotional. We can nuke most physical pain in under two minutes. Okay? And I, I could go into all the different reasons, but anyway, my gift to you guys for coming out, for putting up with the hard chairs, <laughs> my colorful metaphors, my picking on you, is, is, is my way of saying thank you for coming out. Uh, but you do have to, to book your, your console. It's free. There's no charge. It, normally, it's $350 to walk in my door. Okay? But if you guys want to come and hang out and, and, and go through some things and, and find out if, we, if what we do is a fit for you, see Candy. She'll get you set up, and uh, we'll get you on the schedule. And you guys will come in, and for 30 minutes, I'm yours. Where are you? Our, our clinic's in Solana Beach. I used to do things here. But the scheduling was so erratic, it just was better to just bring. We just opened a brand new facility, too. We just expanded. We added three new treatments. We have a beautiful sun deck. We're thinking about having the whole office catered, but, you know. Anyway, so everybody have a good time? Yeah. All right. Thank you. <laughs>